Hello and welcome to this tutorial on appraising systematic reviews. In this video, we're going to introduce some of the key concepts around appraising systematic reviews. So what is a systematic review? CASP UK, an organisation supporting critical appraisal training, define it as a review in which evidence on a topic has been systematically identified, appraised and summarised according to predetermined criteria. In the hierarchy of evidence, which we covered in our introduction video, Systematic reviews typically appear at the top, and this is due to the potentially large populations that a systematic review can cover. Often a review will include randomised control trials and or cohort studies, which have bigger patient groups. They also have value as they bring together a wealth of information which has been appraised by a team, saving you time having to read numerous papers a day. However, systematic reviews still need to be appraised themselves before the information in them can be applied to your patient groups. First of all, take a look at the question being asked. Do you think it is a clear and focused question? You may want to use the PICO format here, which we looked at in our introduction video. One of the big areas to appraise with a systematic review is the search process. As a systematic review is bringing together so much information on one topic, we want to see that the search process to find this data has been thorough. Have a look if they included what terms they used for the search. There's no minimum or maximum on the number, but they should be appropriate terms to find the needed results. Do you think there are any terms which should have been included or taken out? Look as well if the search terms had to be altered at any point. This can happen depending on the databases used, but do you think the change was great enough that the results obtained would be affected? Not only do you need to check the search, but also where they found the information. As with terms, there is no minimum or maximum number of healthcare databases to include, but they should be appropriate ones. Commonly used databases include Medline, Embase and Cochrane Library, but there are many more available. You may also want to research a database if it is not one that you are familiar with. Ideally, as well as the databases, the researchers should also check the reference list on the articles they have found, as this can be another useful way of capturing results. With a systematic review, in order to eliminate bias, the researcher should ideally source unpublished data as well as published data to give the full picture on the topic they are writing about. This may also be referred to as sourcing grey literature, which covers a number of different types of literature. An example is following up on conference abstracts to try and get the full article in a study being discussed. It is also useful for the researcher to contact original authors and experts in order to clarify the information. Next, we have different types of bias which can occur in a systematic review. The first is language bias, which is a preference for using literature based on the language it is published in, for example, English only, which could mean vital information written in other languages is ignored. We then have reporting bias, which is when the researchers select papers based on whether they have significant results or not. The researchers should complete a specified protocol for them to follow and which is made publicly available to be transparent about their systematic review process. Make sure to check that information around this is included. The next few types of bias come under the reporting bias umbrella, starting with publication bias. This relates to the tendency for positive results to be published more frequently than negative results, which is why it is important for researchers to source that unpublished data. There is also a type of bias called multiple or duplicate bias, and this is where studies, often those with significant results, are published in more places, making it easier to notice for a systematic review. Other kinds of reporting bias include time lag bias. This is where results with positive results may be published sooner than those with negative results and could mean important papers are missed off. Citation bias is again related to studies with positive results appearing more frequently within other studies and therefore being picked up more easily for a systematic review than others. Location bias relates to restricted access to the studies the researchers may have and which databases an article may be indexed on, potentially making it easier to miss them. With some of these biases, you may have to bring in your own knowledge or discuss with colleagues. For example, you may be aware of papers which should have been included. Finally, it's important to check that they have included a clear inclusion and exclusion criteria for their results, along with the reasons as to why they've made these decisions. Do you agree with their criteria? Have they included the right results to answer the research question? Are the results similar enough in their characteristics that they can be compared to one another? If there are variations, is this discussed and do you think it could have had an effect? Are the results as up to date as they can be? Thank you for watching this video. In the next tutorial, we will focus on forest plots, which you will often find in a systematic review. 
If you need further help with critical appraisal, please contact your site library or visit our course on Moodle.